Welcome back, everyone. This is Jaronitis bringing you Feed the Beast 1710. Today, we are starting on episode 24. And today, we are actually kind of starting on episode 24 and a half. Um, I started recording episode 24, and I did a couple of things, and then I stopped for a second so that uh, I could do a little, couple little things and, uh, you know, just a, just a normal cut. And uh, I kind of uh, didn't have my microphone on, uh, and I realized that. So the first basically eh, 12 to 15 minutes of this episode that I recorded are silent. So just, yeah. Uh, let me just show you what I did in that little bit of time. Uh, unfortunately, one of the things I did was I went ahead and got the next uh, breed of trees. Okay, uh, in between the episodes... Uh, that would have been anyway. Uh, I spent a little bit of time uh, letting my bees pollinate the trees. Uh, I leveled this mountain the rest of the way because I wanted to let my bees run, and I figured I'd do something useful while the bees were running. Okay, so I went ahead and finished leveling out this mountain as I had intended to do in the first place. Okay, so uh, after I did that, uh, I, I actually then started recording. When I started recording, I showed... The mutations on the trees i used the grafters and i got the hill cherry sapling which is what would actually uh was the one we wanted to get back uh, i had like 18 mutations and i got one hill cherry out of it so it was uh, unfortunate that i did it that way but thankfully only one was necessary so i planted the one grew the one and then i broke one of the uh, leaves from it with the grafter to get the sapling for the second one over there so now we're working towards walnuts uh, walnuts are hill cherry plus silver lime, okay? And uh, these have been running for just a few minutes, and uh, so yeah, I kind of messed that up. Uh, the other thing I did was we were basically we were having combs and bees being produced by the bees running, okay? And when they cycle through, you get extra bees and you get combs. Well, I got tired of walking back and forth, picking the combs up out of these chests, and then bringing them over to the centrifuge, okay? So what I did was, and this is something, again, that was in the silent part of the episode, um, I basically devised a plan to automatically remove the things from the, uh, from the chests, okay? So what I did was I took this chest right here, and I made this an intermediary chest, and then I put an item pipe here, and basically these item pipes were going to run from right here all the way back over and underneath each of these chests okay then all of these underneath here would be set to automatically extract inventory okay when they automatically extracted their inventory it would go to this chest now i didn't want there to be any bees that got to get taken from those chests and brought over here so what i did was i put the item filter i had left over from last time in here and i specified to have it pull combs okay and it's whitelisted on combs. It's ignoring metadata and NVT. Uh, NVT is really not relevant in this case, but I did it just because it was there. And uh, and basically, I put one comb from forestry, one comb from magic bees, and one comb from extra bees, because all the combs share the same item number. Uh, they just have different uh, metadata. As you can see, the colon six on the end of this one. So this should automatically empty only the combs out of these chests okay anyway so once i got that going uh basically i ran all of the uh I, I made it so that when the combs got here anyway that they were extracted from this chest and put over into the centrifuge now the problem with that would be once the centrifuge was full with one type of comb the centrifuge would then be full as an inventory space right and any other combs would then, instead of uh, going into centrifuge, would bypass the centrifuge and go to the barrels and the chest on the end of the barrel that I set up. Okay, and that's over here. Sorry, I was going to show you that, but I didn't want to get blown up again. Uh, so when the centrifuge centrifuged things, it is automatically extracted, sent past these barrels, which are holding the more common items that we're going to be getting, and then in the gold chest here is where we get the excess stuff that we're not going to have that much of right so the problem was that the combs would come here then they would get extracted fill the centrifuge and then wind up over here in the gold chest 
Well, what I did then was I basically made it so that the brown color, as you can see here, uh, when you make these, you can have the channels be colored, right? So I had the brown channel was the only channel that goes into the centrifuge. Okay, now the centrifuge here is moving items in and out at the same time. But on the insert mode, when you go here, it's on insert. Uh, insert is on the brown channel. So only things from this chest can wind up in the centrifuge, right? So then the combs would go to the centrifuge. But since that's the only inventory on the brown channel, only the combs could go into the centrifuge. The brown channel does not go into the golden chest. So the combs would wind up here and they would just wait their turn to go into the centrifuge. Okay, so that is actually pretty decent. And I had a little bit of trouble, trouble troubleshooting that, but uh, we got that working now. Now, the only other side effect of that is when we have a silky comb produced by the uh, uh, tropical queen. I was trying to say jungle, but it's tropical. Uh, they produce the silky comb, and the silky comb produces silky propolis. Well, the silky propolis has to be re-centrifuged in order to get what we want out of it, that being propolis and the silk wisps, okay? So once it's centrifuged once, it winds up back over here in the golden chest, right? So what we did then was we basically took the uh, gold chest and we added a brown input to this chest, okay? The brown input from this chest is going to take anything from this chest that can be re-centrifuged and put it here so any silky propolis that's in the golden chest will get pulled back over to the centrifuge and re-centrifuged okay and that's basically what i had done before i realized that my microphone was messed up so that's basically where we were now i've spent the last seven minutes explaining what i did for 15 minutes before i realized that things weren't working uh, so now that i've explained that we can actually move on with the actual episode okay All right, so now that we've got that figured out, and I've showed you that, uh, the bees are processing, we're getting mutations. I think that either that's a mutation already, or it's just the cherries ripening, uh, because you can actually get cherries out of the hill cherry things, uh, trees. And stupid bees keep stinging me, and it's getting really annoying. Uh, anyway, so we want to cover a couple of things. We want to cover uh, specifically frames, and uh and also some basic bee breeding okay uh one of the other things that i had started doing in between episodes is i started trying to forcefully get more tropical bees okay uh the tropical bee that i had gotten from the villagers was not purebred okay however through dumb luck it wound up cycling through multiple times and becoming a purebred pristine stock tropical queen and that really was lucky because it had a big chance of not doing that. Okay. So anyway, we wound up with the purebred tropical queen and she's been cycling through quite a bit. And we t basically what we did was we took the tropical queen's extra drones that she was producing because she became pure enough to make drones that were identical. So they started stacking. We took the extra tropical drones that were stacking and we bred them to another type of bee okay it doesn't really matter what type any pristine princess will do okay and actually i'm actually fixing to do it again because i can and i need to um basically what we're going to do is we're going to take this unusual princess here you don't need to exist right there for a minute and we're going to take this unusual princess and we're going to breed it with these tropical drones now because these tropical drones are stacking uh we're going to put the entire stack of 16 here in with this unusual princess okay by doing that each time a the bee cycles each time the queen dies uh, she's going to automatically be bred with the tropical drones because they're already in the slot whatever drones she produces won't be anything you know they won't be able to come in here because this slots already full right so each time this cycles we have a uh, basically we're gonna go from an unusual princess which is now an unusual queen when she dies off, we'll get an unusual tropical princess. So she'll be half unusual and half tropical. That princess will then come, be cycled back into the slot, and then the tropical drones that are here will automatically combine with her. Okay, And that will make a half unusual, half tropical 
become, uh, when it dies off, we will have a three quarters uh, tropical and one quarter unusual. And then when that princess cycles through, she'll be bred with a tropical drone. And eventually, through many cycles, we will wind up with another purebred tropical princess. Okay, And that's what we're in the process of doing right here. Okay, actually, I think it might have just finished. I left five in here, didn't I? I think I left five in here. If I left five in here, then we got two more princess, uh, two more drones out of this. So that should have actually worked. Let's beelize this one real quick just to look at it. It should give two drones when it cycles. Yes. Okay, so it is a tropical tropical. It does run off of vines, but here we go. Fertility is two drones, okay? So when this queen dies off, there will be two drones, okay? Now, those two drones being exactly the same as the drones that are already right here is what's important, okay? When she dies off, the princess will be tropical, and the drones that we get will be identical to the ones that are already here, and therefore, when they cycle through, they will stack on top of these, once they do that, we know that this will constantly produce the exact same thing every time it cycles because we have forcefully bred them to be identical to the one that gave for it, which is this one here. Okay, so that's the way we force ourselves to get more tropical bees. And we want more tropical bees because we need the products that the tropical bees are producing, uh, that being the uh, propolis and the silk wisps. Okay, uh, so that's what we're working on there. Now, once we get that done, well, actually, that's processing on its own now. We just need to remember this has seven drones. If we come back and it has nine drones when this finishes its cycle, then we'll know that that's complete. And if we want to, we can force it to do it again. But for now, we're not going to worry about that. What we are going to do is get started looking at frames. Okay, uh, frames are what we can use to uh, help our bees to continue to do stuff all right uh well we can manipulate our bees with the frames let's put it that way all right so there are quite a few types of frames uh in this case we're going to be working with the normal frames and the extra bees frames that go along with and i don't need this magnet on right now so i need to put that in and start charging again all right, so what we're going to be looking at is the basic frames, which are the untreated frame, the impregnated frame, and the proven frame. Okay, the normal untreated frame is just sticks around string. The impregnated frame is impregnated sticks around string. And the proven frame doesn't have a recipe. You get it from trading with villagers. What did I just do there? Oh, okay, never mind. I brought up something else, which is going to be really awesome, but we'll have to get to that later. Okay, so uh, basically we want to make some impregnated frames. Uh, the reason we want to make impregnated frames is because they are the base frame that we use to make the other frames that we want to make. So to make impregnated frames, we need impregnated sticks. Impregnated sticks are logs impregnated with seed oil. Haha, -ha, told you we are going to need a bunch of that. So what we're going to need now is some logs. This should do. Oh, let's grab two of them. And we're going to go out here. I I think we've got almost 10 buckets of seed oil if I checked last time. Yes, 9.980. So yeah, almost 10 buckets. So basically in the carpenter using seed oil, we put this pattern in and it makes two impregnated sticks out of impregnated logs. That seems a bit expensive to me, but who am I to argue? So we take these impregnated sticks and once we get eight of them, we can go ahead and make an impregnated frame. Okay, now for the purpose of this, I went ahead and brought a uh, crafting station out here with me. And I thought I had, guess not. I thought I had brought a uh, some string with me, but apparently I have not. Mob drops, string, thank you. Actually, we'll just do this right here since we're standing here. Uh, one piece of string and the sticks makes one impregnated frame. Okay, there are several frames that we're going to be trying to work with this episode, and uh, let me just explain the purpose of the frames, and I'll tell you what they do. Okay, the purpose of the frames, by the way, the normal frames, basically what they do is they increase your bees' productivity and lifespan. In other words, they produce combs more often and live longer. 
Okay, the only difference between the untreated frame, the impregnated frame, and the proven frame is their durability. Okay, uh, they both, like all three of them, have give the same increase in productivity and lifespan. It's just that the untreated frame breaks really quickly. Uh, the impregnated frame not quite as quickly and then the proven frame lasts the longest of all of them okay and what we're going to do is we're going to use the impregnated frame and we're going to change that to suit our purposes all right so let's see the chocolate frame from extra bees is basically a impregnated frame and some cocoa beans the chocolate frame makes your bees die faster okay and you might think why would you want your bees to die faster well there actually is a good purpose for that and we're gonna get that yeah we're going to get to that in just a second okay because that's one of the ones we're going to be using uh the second one is the restraint frame which is just the impregnated frame and iron bars uh, this frame basically cuts down the distance that your bees travel or their effect range, okay? So I could use these on my tropical bees and make it so that they don't travel out as far, and it gives me a less chance of being stung by them because they don't reach out as far from the apiary that they work in. But we're not going to worry about that right now because I really don't think that's worth, you know, doing. Uh, the next one is the soul frame. The soul frame is another one that we're going to be using because it is very handy to have. The soul frame is the impregnated frame plus some soul sand. And basically what this does, it, is, it increases your chances of mutation during a bee's life cycle. Okay? What that basically means is it increases the percentage chance when you are breeding bees to get a new type of bee. Okay? And I'll get into that a little bit more because we're also going to be using that this episode. All right? After that is the healing frame. The healing frame is impregnated frame plus clay. And that basically extends the life of your bees. Uh, it makes them live longer, but it, in making them live longer, it also reduces their productivity. Uh, so they don't actually uh, produce as much stuff, but they do live longer. Uh, it also decreases the chances of a mutation happening. Okay, after that, there is the Nova frame. The Nova frame is a creative mode only uh, frame. It is used for testing purposes. It basically makes your bees die after one tick or one, uh, one uh, impact to their life cycle. Okay, uh, so that is only for testing purposes. So uh, they actually have one called the Oblivion frame from Magic Bees that does the same thing as the Nova frame, and uh, it's craftable. <laughs> We'll get to that. Um, hopefully, I'll find some there. They can be found as dungeon loot, and those things make working with bees like incredibly easier. Um, but yeah, we'll get to that. So what we basically need to do now is we need to make impregnated frames, and I want to make uh, soul frames, which are going to be used for breeding, and chocolate frames, which technically are going to be used for breeding as well, but uh, also for helping force to force the bees to have. Uh, more tropical bees quicker because uh, I'm impatient and I want them to die quickly so that they can become tropical easier. Now the problem that we have here first off is because we need chocolate frames. Okay, For chocolate frames we need cocoa beans. Now there are several ways that we can make cocoa beans. There's actually a really really easy way and I, I don't want to do that. It's too easy. Uh, actually I'll go ahead and show you just because. Um, slime plant seeds become cocoa beans because they are essentially brown dye. But I don't want to do that. That's too easy. I want to do something that's a little bit more complicated but also is funner and is also going to help me out in a second way. Okay, I can do this. I can do this really easily. But I eventually will run out of slime plant seeds, okay? And that's not going to help me because I can't grow more cocoa beans right off. And I'll show you why here in just a second. Uh, you can take brown wool and pulverize it and have a chance of getting cocoa beans. Or we could do a mana infusion to get cocoa beans. Now, I'm going to do it this way. And the reason I'm going to do it this way is because it actually is going to serve two purposes. Okay? So I'll, get to, I'll just show you what it means. Okay? We're going to make an alchemy catalyst. An alchemy catalyst is two brewing stands, four living rock, a mana pearl, and two gold. Let's make this real quick. And you'll understand here in just a second why this is important and why it's a good thing to have. Um, what did I say I needed in here? Two pieces of gold. That's right. And I hope I have enough living rock. Ah, good. I have seven. I need four. One mana pearl, please. And two brewing stands. I will... It's not bad. This. Oh, I just missed this chance. Okay, that's fine. 
I just missed the chance to grab that and it compressed. And we're going to need some mob drops. Two of those. All right, so we're going to need two brewing stands. We're going to go here and here with this there. Four living rock and two pieces of gold. All right, the way this functions is it what it basically does is it adds new recipes uh, to your um, mana pools, okay? Uh, basically, you put this underneath the mana pool like this, and when you look at it again, it's going to see the bottom of this mana pool is normal, but the bottom of this one shows the catalyst on the underside, okay? And we're going to use this to do some magical transformations with mana. Growing stuff. Where's the... Ah, there we go. Pumpkin seeds. In this case, as you saw when I looked at it earlier, when you toss pumpkin seeds into here it is going to give us cocoa beans now when you look at this uh, you see that it shows nothing in this mana pool when we go to this one it shows that it can transform into cocoa beans and that is because the uh the alchemy catalyst basically adds that recipe to it and lets you do that all right now we have cocoa beans and i can go ahead and make chocolate frames with the cocoa beans if i want to however if I use up this, then I'll need more pumpkins, and I don't want to do that. I want to grow the cocoa beans. Now, to grow cocoa beans requires that you have jungle wood, okay? And I don't have any jungle wood. The reason I don't have any jungle wood is because I never actually found any out in the wild, okay, when I went out looking. Now, the reason we did the cocoa beans this way is because just because we don't have jungle wood doesn't mean we can't get jungle wood. With the alchemy catalyst, as you can see over here, we get nothing. But over here, we can transform this oak wood into spruce wood. Then the spruce wood will become birch wood. The birch wood will become, what do you know, jungle wood. Isn't that handy? So let's go ahead and do this five more times. And now we have six pieces of jungle wood. So neat all right so we're going to take this out here and now we're going to go ahead and plant ourselves some chocolate now i've decided that i'm going to put this over here um because you plant the cocoa beans on the ch on the uh jungle logs okay so plant these here and hopefully i'm not sure if this is going to work or if it does work i'm not sure how it's going to work um we should hopefully ah yeah cool we'll see it the uh, agricarnation is actually reaching these, and it's helping them grow faster. Now, I don't know if the grind, if the harvester is going to harvest them automatically. That would be less than desirable. But uh, let's see. Let's grab my sigil of the green grove and force these to grow a little bit faster. All right. Let's leave them for just a second and see if the harvester hits them. I think the harvester only works on the level that it's placed on, which will work fine by me because I don't really want these to be harvested by that. I want to harvest them myself. So that should work. So awesome. Now we have cocoa beans and we have a cocoa bean farm. And all from Batania. Did I mention I like Batania? I really like Batania. All right, cool. So... Um, we're going to go ahead and take some of the impregnated frames that we stole from the villagers, which, by the way, if the impregnated frame has damage on it, it actually cannot be used to be changed. So only undamaged impregnated frames can be transformed into other versions of the frames, okay? Sweet. We got more of those. And we can go ahead and make some more impregnated frames this way. Excellent. That should be more than enough for the moment. As a matter of fact, let's put some of these back just for inventory space. Queen goes there. Drone goes over here. All right. So now that we have that, let's walk in here real quick and grab some soul sand. Do you mind? And now we should be able to go ahead and make ourselves some soul frames. Excellent. No, over there. All right, so 
one of the other things we're going to need to do is we're going to need a, to set up a breeding section uh, for the bees. And the breeding section, we don't want to be automated. So I can either unautomate one or two of these, depending on how many different types of breeding I want to try to do at once, or I can just create a couple more uh, apiaries for the purpose of breeding. Uh, in this case, I'm going to go ahead and create two apiaries to be my breeding apiaries. So give me just a second to do this. We'll get them set up and we'll get started with breeding. Be right back. All right. Got ourselves a breeding area. Just put it off to the side just a little bit right here. Uh, of course, you know, once we get to a certain point, we'll have to build the actual bee enclosure, uh, which will, of course, be called Honeycomb Hideout because any bee enclosure that I build in mass anyway will be honeycomb hideout uh anyway but uh what we're going to be doing here is we're going to start the breeding process and this is actually a fairly simple process i'll probably go through maybe the first or one or two breeds and then i'll show you uh and i'll do most of the breeding off camera i might just pop in and say look this kind of bee and then oh look now it's this kind of bee and something like that uh last season i did a whole bunch of breeding on camera it actually seemed to be kind of popular but uh eh, too much breeding I did I just get hit by a butterfly? Did that butterfly have thorns on or something? Sure, whatever. Anyway, so um, breeding. When you are breeding, uh, the first thing you want to do is create what is called a common bee. Okay, now, technically speaking, I have accidentally come into a couple of these bees already, but I want to just go ahead and start from scratch because those happened accidentally, and this we're going to do on purpose. Okay, so the common bee is basically any two uh, world gen bees combined, okay? Unusual, Sorceress, Rocky, and Bitter. There's 33 pages that all make common, okay? They all have a 15% chance of happening, and it literally is a princess of one type and a drone of a different type, okay? Any of them will work. In this case, we're going to go ahead and use a Unusual Princess, Pristine Stock, and a Meadows drone. Well, he doesn't have stock, okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put three chocolate frames in here. And by doing this, we're going to basically have them die faster. And there are flowers nearby, so this should work rather nicely. Now, normally their life would tick down rather slowly. With three chocolate frames in here, it's going to tick down a lot faster. So um, I believe that every 27 seconds or so, uh, they will do the lifespan will tick once, and the amount of life damage that they take is based on the uh, the traits that are there. Like uh, lifespan is, uh, you know, if the lifespan is short, then it will take more damage per every 27 seconds, um, or if the lifespan is long, it'll take less. So in this case, this must have actually a pretty decent lifespan for it to be with three chocolate frames uh, take that much damage. That's surprising. Maybe I picked the wrong type to go with. Um, I want your morph. Whatever. I'm not even using morph this season. It's just funny to know I can have it. Um, so yeah, the princess is probably the one that makes the difference. Let's see. Let's go ahead and hit this up for a secondary one. Let's see, let's beelize the forest princess real quick. Lifespan is shorter, so yeah, shorter lifespan should work. And you know what? Just for the fun of it, let's grab an unusual drone. Unusual, and it's also shorter lifespan. I wonder why that uh, that's ticking down awful slow considering. Let's go ahead and toss these guys in here with some chocolate frames, and that should hopefully tick them down. Now, before they take their final tick of life damage, before they die, we want to switch the chocolate frames out for the soul frames. Okay, the soul frames, as I told you before, increase the chances of you getting a different kind of bee. Okay, so basically the way this works is when you're trying to breed, you have a, in this case, breeding common, we have a 15% chance of getting uh, a new type of bee. In this case, uh, we have a 15% chance of getting a common B. Okay, when we put the soul frames in, it increases that percentage chance. So, wow, this one's actually bees are living longer in this version, I think, because I'm fairly certain in 164 that uh, one 
tick of life damage uh, with three chocolate frames was pretty much enough to kill the bee almost instantly on a shorter lifespan. So, well, oh well, that's fine. But, uh, so anyway, when you have a 15% chance, when you swap these out, I don't know the exact percentage, but it increases the chances from 15% to, I'm, I'm, I don't know, maybe 5% per frame. Uh, that may be right, maybe it's probably wrong. But uh, basically, it's going to increase the chances of getting a new type of bee uh, by putting these in. Now, having them in there uh, while it's running is not relevant. They need to be put in for the final tick of life. So basically, the last time this decreases before it become before the bee dies is what matters. So you don't need to have the frames in there while they're running, just for when they actually die off and the next generation is born. Okay, so sleep through the night real quick and hopefully we'll get a new type of bee uh, and then uh, we'll go from there into the next form so basically what we're gonna do now there are other frames that we can use for these purposes I didn't get okay so this is a creeper that way and eh, he's probably gonna leave me alone I don't even see him so that should be fine so uh, basically when we this takes uh, probably one more tick of life damage because two more will probably kill it so it should come down to about right here. I don't know. We can probably take one more. Another 27 seconds, please. And then we're going to swap these out for the last one. And hopefully we're going to come out with a common princess. Uh, what we need is a pure common princess and a pure common drone. That way we can be guaranteed to continue to have common uh bees all right that should be enough all right and how's this one doing this one's got a ways to go all right we're going to wait for this to tick down its life one more time and see what we get out from it and then we'll go from there so another 27 seconds please let's go to the clock do 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 all right sweet so we have common princess and common drone and an unusual drone now that doesn't necessarily mean that we've actually succeeded here okay we got a little bit of time what we're going to do is we're going to now bealize these what we want to see is for it to say that it is purebred common princess it's not very likely mind you it's probably going to be a hybrid yep common unusual Okay, so with common unusual, that means it is not purebred. It means that when you use this bee, it may not come out as a pure common bee after. Common meadows? What? Common unusual. Oh, okay, yeah, okay, so this one went meadows, because this was, wow, lost track for a second there. Uh, and then this one is going to be unusual common. Okay, so now that we have something that actually says common on it, we want to choose the next most logical one to try to get a purebred. Okay, so this is common unusual. This one is common meadows. And this one is unusual common. So basically, these are both going to work out the same. So we want to uh, compare the two and see which traits we want most. Okay, the unusual drone has temperature normal and both two. Both two means that it is uh, both, uh, it's tolerant up to and down to. It also is a slower worker as opposed to the slowest worker. So we want to use this drone with this princess and hopefully we'll wind up with purebred common bees that have all of the traits that we want. So now we put the chocolate frames back in here and at the last minute we're going to swap, ah, I missed this one nuts oh well how did that happen that shouldn't have been that quick no oh, whichever let's go ahead and bealize these real quick oh look a common common princess nice that one worked out perfect first try common forest drone and a common meadows drone all right so now we have a pure common princess that is actually pretty awesome to get that on the first try like that is fairly lucky actually now let's just do these guys too Forest unusual. Yeah. All right. So now that we have this purebred common princess, we need a purebred common drone to go with it. All right. So 
as long as we have that, then we can run them together. And as long as both the uh, active and inactive traits are both common on the princess, and as long as they are both common on the drone, when they run together, they are pretty much guaranteed to only produce common offspring. Okay, because there's no, there's no extra genetics in there. It's just common and common. Okay, so we have the princess. Now, unfortunately, with just the princess, if we don't have a full-bred common drone to go with, then it's still not going to be good enough. What we're going to wind up having to do is either hope to get a pure common drone out of this pairing, or in this case, we can put the pure common princess and put one of the partially uh, common uh, drones in here with her and hope that it doesn't uh, dilute the pool, I guess is the way to say it. Uh, so we're going to run the pure common princess with the partially common drone and see how this comes out. We'll be back in just a second when both of these are ready to look at. Alrighty, here we go. This one, unfortunately, did not turn out very well. We went with forest drones. Uh, so those obviously are not going to be pure common drones. But uh, did the princess still stay? Nope, princess got diluted. I went from my full common princess to a not full common princess. So that's disappointing to say the least this one wound up common unusual and oh well there's a full common drone so if i had just been patient and waited i would have actually gotten what i wanted oh well so there's a common forest <clears throat> let's go ahead and use a um forest unusual actually let's go ahead and see which one of these common meadows Common cultivate forest cultivated really guys, we're gonna go for the cultivator right out of there, huh? That's fine. So yep, we're just gonna put the common unusual princess in here, along with a common unusual drone or a. Uh, you know what? Whatever. We'll put common and common together. That's not the greatest in the world to try, but sure. We're keeping the common drone off to the side because that will actually work in our favor. Unusual, unusual, you're useless. Forest cultivated, forest unusual, forest common. There we go. Toss this forest common one in here. Replace them all with chocolate frames again. And back around we go. Give me a minute. All right, here we go again. We wound up actually with a cultivated drone, which is kind of ironic considering I actually want to go to cultivated next. And we have a possibility of a purebred common princess. Please be purebred. Common forest. Ugh. Common forest. Common unusual. Unusual cultivated. Now that's kind of ironic. I'm going to actually cultivated common. I'm going to put these two together and see if I might come out with a pure cultivated princess. Uh, because, you know, they both have cultivated uh, as part of their setup. So I might get lucky and go straight to cultivated. Although I do need to stop at common in the middle. So this is a common forest. This is a common forest. We're going to throw those together. And unfortunately, we don't have enough time in this episode. I'm already over by quite a bit. Uh, so we're just going to let these run. Uh, just to let you know, I am going to get... I'm going to keep doing this until we get the common uh, princess. Then I'll combine her with this common drone. Once I do that, I will put her into the auto cyclers over here. And I will let them cycle through until I get a bunch of extra common drones. Okay. Once I have the extra common drones, then I can do common bees plus any world gen bees to try to get cultivated. Okay. Cultivated is actually what I want because they have a bunch of the really good traits that I want. So that's what I'm going to work on in between episodes. Next episode, we're probably going to get away from bees and trees for a little bit. I really need to get that auto mining set up going. So hopefully by the time next episode comes, we will have uh, some walnut trees. And then we can try to get uh, some walnuts and uh, I think it's silver lime and walnut uh, combined in order to get the chestnuts. And that would be really cool if we could do that. 
Uh, and then after we get our auto mining started and get our chestnuts automated, then we're going to need to uh, to get started on genetics so that we can start using all these traits that we're getting from these uh, different kinds of bees. Although I'm not sure if we'll do it in that order. We'll have to see. I'm going to let these run for a while and get myself some bees that I want. And we'll be back next episode. So until then, this is Jaronitis signing off on episode 24 of my Let's Play series. Like me if you like me. Subscribe if you want to see what I get into next. And as always, help spread the gaming.